thank you very much for having me here today and it is my absolute pleasure to be here among the people of chennai this is a city we admire so much for its intellectual depth for its ability to debate it has produced leaders in every walk of life at the national and international level and i just want to say at the very start before i welcome all our participants in the debate to come on stage today and share their thoughts that i'd like to thank you all from behalf of the times group on behalf of times now and on behalf of myself and my team who have come in from mumbai for allowing us to bring this debate to you before all of you so thank you all very much for coming should we start the debate is that a loud yes I like my audience to participate in the debate. My debates are a little noisy as you know. I I am told that I should restrain my guests. I say I cannot even restrain myself. It gives me great pleasure to first welcome all my six participants today who I will thereafter introduce to join me on both sides of this panel today. Please give them a round of applause ladies and gentlemen. Give them a round of applause. To all my panelists, to the people of Chennai, to the wonderful audience this afternoon. Thank you for joining me on this very important occasion of the Times Uncompromise debate here in Chennai. The subject which we will put to debate and there's always a for the motion and against the motion in the debate. Does judicial activism really compromise executive powers we have three speakers for the motion and three speakers against the motion i am not putting the motion to vote at the end of this debate but all of you in the audience and everyone who is going to watch this millions of people across the length and breadth of our country will make up their minds on where they stand and who's the winner and who's the loser against the motion does judicial activism really compromise executive powers in other words very strongly in favor of judicial intervention not interference i have to my right and please give them a round of applause as i welcome them dr subramaniam swami <laughs> senior advocate and president of the janata party now with the nda fighting the 2g battle against the government <laughs> <laughs> fighting very hard if i may say so <laughs> former member of the planning commission cabinet minister someone who's been at the indian statistical institute and harvard thank you for joining me dr swami so dr swami is right we have former cabinet secretary to the government of india ias officer from the 1961 batch if i am not mistaken he studied at imperial college london has a masters degree in public administration from harvard university please welcome ladies and gentlemen tsr subramaniam <laughs> to his right one of the most respected legal luminaries in india today former chief justice of the punjab and haryana high court judge of the delhi high court he is a graduate from hindu college and has done his llb from delhi university please welcome ladies and gentlemen justice mukul mudgal thank you very much and that's the team that is going to be against the motion today speaking very very strongly for judicial intervention now speaking against the motion to my left i have great pleasure in introducing it's interesting to have a lawyer speak uh, for the motion <laughs> you know you're speaking against judicial intervention to some extent is <laughs> a c aryaman sundaram one of the best known lawyers of the supreme court today he's a gold medalist from the university of madras he was the youngest lawyer if i'm not mistaken to be a senior advocate of the high court here in 2001 moved to the supreme court and today is one of the foremost lawyers in the country's highest court mr sundaram thank you for joining me today to his left we have former mumbai police commissioner MN Singh he is the man who led the investigations into the serial blast in 1993 he has led all the difficult and sensitive departments in mumbai whether it's the anti corruption bureau whether it's being chief of crime and he has won the president's police medal for his distinguished services it's interesting to have a ips officer on the panel mr mn singh thank you for joining me and to his left 
former Comptroller and Auditor General CAG of India, Mr. Vijendra Kaul. Mr. Vijendra Kaul has been one of the foremost IAS officers, civil servants of our country. He is also not from the 61, I think from the 65 batch, from the Madhya Pradesh Kada. He's worked in the United Nations for several years, and today he represents the wealth of opinion that says, no, we must draw the line, and there must be a Lakshman Rekha which must not be crossed by the judiciary in dealing with the executive or with any other part of our Indian institutions. Thank you very much, Mr. Call. Thank you to all my panelists. Now, usually in a debate, we have people speaking for the motion who set the debate right. I just want to quote James Madison, the fourth president of the United States of America, who said, and you can use this whichever way you want, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, whether in terms of one person or a few people, whether by hereditary nature, whether in an elected nature or a self-appointed nature, may justly be pronounced to be the very definition of tyranny. Ladies and gentlemen, do judicial decisions breach bounds of constitutional propriety and permissibility? Is judicial activism a requirement to defend a common man's interest? Is it the last court of appeal for the Ahmadi? Isn't it true that judicial activism doesn't exist in a vacuum. It is forced. It is a result of our circumstances. It may be a result of the executive failures in carrying out its own duties. Some food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. Our first speaker in this debate today speaking against the motion, strongly in favor of judicial interference, is former Chief Justice of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, retired Justice Mukul Mudgal. Please. Thank you. When one pillar of democracy is dysfunctional or comatose, the other pillars must occupy the space. When the executive does not do his job, then the judiciary has to step in. You said the example of Lakshman Rekha. This is not the mythical Lakshman Rekha. This is a flexible one. The judicial intervention must be temporary, must correct the course, then come back. If it were not for judicial activism, forgotten and weak sections of our society like prisoners, mentally ill, bonded and construction labor, silent sufferers like rivers, forests and nature would not have had any audience, anybody to look after them. And it is only because of judicial activism do you see that our environment is being preserved, our forgotten and weak sections of the society are getting a glimpse of what the Constitution promises them and kindly remember what public interest has brought out. Constitution appointments by unfit persons as in the case of Central Vigilance Commissioner. In the High Courts, some examples I'd like to give you. You all remember in Punjab and Haryana there have been honor killings. Today, there are safe homes for the possible victims of honor killings for 15 days absolutely safely with protection the young couple is uh, given security and a place to stay the only thing i would say where the court should draw a line is when it appoints these empowered committees to go into environment mining other related issues no committee should be permanent it should be temporary eventually the power must go back to the executive or the judiciary itself. The auction has one uh, problem that if you can't auction land, supposing school is to be given land, it cannot compete with an industry, you know, or it cannot compete with another rich school. A poor children's school should uh, get a school by a land by allotment. And lastly, I would say that things like water, if they are privatized and auction, then the poor would never get it because the profit motive will prevail. Thank you. Justice Mudgal, thank you very much for introductory comments. It can also be argued, Mr. Mudgal, that does the judiciary, has the judiciary lost faith in the wish of the executive or the earnestness or genuineness of the executive in implementing the fundamental rights and defending the fundamental liberties of the people? We'll take that debate forward. Our second speaker, Aryaman Sundaram, speaking for the motion. 
Mr. Sundar. Justice Mudgal is very correct when he said that the origin of Judicial activism was really to reach the people who didn't get justice, to reach the downtrodden, to reach the people who required a lot of help to safeguard their fundamental rights. Unfortunately, that is not where we are now. It started there, like many good starts three decades ago, Justice Krishnayar and other eminent judges who started it. Today, we have gone into a different sphere. And when we talk about judicial activism today, invariably this activism means intruding into the executive functions. By executive, I include the legislative functions, which goes against the very basis of the separation of power. Let us not forget that essential to the Indian democracy, an essential part of our constitution, is the separation of power. And no matter how great the excuse, how great the felt justification may be, that is one Lakshman Rekha which should not be crossed because it strikes at the basis of a democracy. My whole concern with judicial activism are what I call the four C's. The first is clarity or the lack of clarity. I say it is the lack of clarity because what is judicial activism? When does judicial activism cross that very thin line and become judicial overreaching? When does it cross yet another thin line and become judicial jingoism? There has to be some kind of clarity as to the limits within which this judicial activism can be uh, exercised. It can be exercised to safeguard fundamental rights. In fact, that is the duty of the judiciary. There is no doubt about it. But when you go into policy, you are intruding into executive function, and there is a complete lack of clarity as to where that Lakshman Leka lies. The second is consistency or the lack of consistency. I say this. Because unlike the Supreme Court of the United States, which sits en masse, all judges of the Supreme Court sit together for every, every case, or judges of the Supreme Court of England, where they sit at least five, in India, invariably, judges sit in benches of two, rarely three, and even more rarely five. So in effect, you have 12 different benches of the Supreme Court, each decision of any one bench of the Supreme Court is a decision of the Supreme Court itself. So whereas one bench may feel it is the judicial function to be active and to involve itself into an executive function in some way or the other, another bench may think to the opposite and say this is no role at all for the judiciary to play. And therefore there is a lack of consistency. The third big problem I find is concession, the third big C, concession by the executive which always is the rule. A weak executive, a weak parliament, a weak government gives rise to a strong judiciary. And unfortunately, as we have found in the past, a very strong executive weakens a judiciary which we had about 40 years ago. The fact of the matter is that this concession by the executive is actually allowing the judiciary to overreach in many cases. And finally, the last C, an area which really concerns me and which worries me is the area of what I call conflict. Why conflict? Who is to decide who, whether the judiciary, judicial activism is overreaching and intruding into executive powers or not? We are talking about a matter where you have in the separation of powers the judiciary on one side, the executive on the other. We have a case where a question arises is the judicial judiciary or the judicial activism really impinging on executive action? And who is to decide that? One of the parties to the very cause, the judiciary itself. The judiciary decides whether it is actually intruding into executive functions or not. It is like a dispute between A and B and you ask A to decide the dispute. Now the fact of the matter is the constitution is very clear in the constitutional functions of the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. As far as possible, we have to stick to it, however tempting it may be otherwise. I just want to conclude my introductory yes. comments with what Justice Frankfurter, the famous judge of the Supreme Court of the United States, said. If judges want to be preachers, they should dedicate themselves to the pulpit. If they want to be basic policy makers, parliament is their place. Judges who do both are most indefensible offenders in government under law. And I quote a judge of the Supreme Court of the United States who said this while sitting as a judge of the Supreme Court. <laughs> to which it can also be said that Thomas Jefferson also said that the execution of the law 
Mr. Sundaram, is more important than the making of them. And when the executive fails in the execution of the law, the judiciary therefore has to intervene, as it did on the 2nd of February 2012, when it gave its phenomenal judgment. But it cannot judgment. make the law. It can ensure execution of law, but it cannot itself make law. While it can say something has been wrongly done by the government, or something ought to be done, it cannot say how the government is to do Since it. Since I have committed the cardinal sin of being unable to restrain myself once again <laughs> into the debate, I welcome our third speaker today, Mr. T.S.R. Subramaniam, on the subject of judicial activism and its, whether it encroaches into executive powers. Uh, thank you, Arnab. Let me start with the first point that uh, I am not a constitutional expert like Justice Mudgal or Ariman Sundara. I am only an observer who has seen the constitution working in, in practice over the past 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, let me make a comment on the Constitution in my own limited observation. The second one, uh, Mr. Sundaram, is India is not America. The conditions are different, situation is different, politics is different. Politics is different. <laughs> in the American system, all power is given to one person. The huge checks and balances are there in the form of the parliament, the parliamentary committees. Every appointment has to be cleared, including Thomas' appointment by a parliamentary committee. It is not given. It is not, it is not given to the executive to do that. In the, in the Indian context, we have had a... I hope I will not be held up for contempt for parliament. <laughs> if in the past 60 years, if the parliament had met only for three days every year to pass the budget and pass the laws and give a vote of confidence, would the country have been any worse than they are today or any better off? <laughs> I go back to the constitution on what is the Supreme Court or the Apex Court or the judiciary supposed to do. I am now reading from the constitution. Ariman Sundaram said that they can't be judge, jury and executioner or prosecutor. The first promise of the constitution is Justice for all citizens. That's the first promise, very first sentence. It defines justice, social, economic, political, all encompassing. Correct. So therefore, right from the beginning, the constitution we have given ourselves gives the Supreme Court as the final arbiter, a final umpire. Naturally, players don't want umpires, particularly powerful players. The Indian, <laughs> the Indian system has not been blessed with checks and balances. And therefore, those in power for the last 60 years, we have seen what happened to the Lokpal. They don't want any umpire to encroach into their territory. And this is clearly, we hear the umpire is coming into his own because the players are misbehaving. I think, I think the entry is permitted. The Supreme Court clearly has a right to intervene. If the right to life is affected, quality of life is affected, the principles are not met. Article 14, 21, 32. I would go further to say, if in these circumstances, when you see abysmal poverty levels, when you see the worst education system in the world, when Indian health conditions are inferior to sub-Saharan Africa, the Supreme Court not only has the powers, it has got the duty to intervene. They have to tell the, they have to tell the executive that these are areas you must come in and do something about. It is very important. I think there is no Lakshman Rekha if there is a Lakshman Rekha, that Rekha, as Justice Mudgal said, is to be established from time to time by the court itself. And the powers of the court are inherent. They are not given by you or I. They are not given by the uh, judiciary, so, uh, by the executive. They are not given by the parliament. The powers are inherent. There is no question of overreach and jingoism. They are only doing their duty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Subramani, for joining me on the debate for your, with your introductory comments. I now move to M.N. Singh, who is speaking today for the motion against judicial overreach. Mr. M.N. Singh. Well, uh, maybe because of uh, the excessive use or the overuse of judicial intervention, this word judicial activism has a very negative connotation. I do not know how many of you will agree with this contention of mine, but in the recent past, this excessive exposure or the use of this uh, phenomenon has created a kind of a negative uh, feeling uh, among the masses, and uh, uh, that is why probably it has become a subject matter of debate today. If it had not had that negative connotation, 
probably would not have been sitting here discussing this issue. Now, judicial uh, activism is something which uh, uh, I have only one contention in this regard. Judicial activism, when intervention acquires the dimension of populism, or what somebody said, jingoism, or when it becomes a case of a judicial overreach, then I don't think you can blame me or the, the ones who feel like me if I feel that it is a case of a negative connotation. My contention is that anyone who is in a position of power should not be an activist. My first basic premise. Anyone who enjoys the state power, power under the law, cannot at the same time be an activist. Why? Because activism, an activist is one who brings an issue of public interest in the public domain and invites public debate. What does a judge do when he becomes an activist? There is no scope for a public debate. And therefore I feel that when a judge becomes an activist, it becomes a one-sided, unidirectional mechanism which what the parliament of the people should have been doing, the judges start doing in the courtroom and the problem arises there. There is a great possibility that the judiciary itself may acquire enormous power which may not be very good in the interest of the democracy. One. Now looking at the whole thing in this background, I feel, you see, judicial activism is, is a term which cannot have one single definition. It may encompass anything from, say, simply lambasting the, the government authorities for the so-called use, misuse of the authority or non-use of authority. It may also include a case of judiciary becoming, acquiring legislative powers and creating laws on public issues without having any public debate. Mr. Evans Singh, sorry to intervene there because I want to give everybody equal turn. I am enjoying only that part where you say that decisions are taken in the absence, of, absence of public interest I'll because the courts say there is too much debate. I will close it by a few. And, and, and you say you want, there is too little debate. I know, I am becoming a little vo too vocal, so you want I, to cut me short. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I concede I do. But, 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 but I will close it simply by, by just give me a minute more. I feel when I said that power and activism cannot go hand in hand. I would, it, imp, it implies that there has to be a certain amount of accountability. Yes. The drawing the Lakshman Lekha means we are still leaving the matter open. Yes. There has to be certain accountability in what process. Sure. In I one know. court, in one court, one court said, question the investigating agency, why ever not arrested? And then therefore the investigating agency has gone head over heels arresting the people. Now what if I, tomorrow I, at the end yes. of the investigation yes, it is Mr. found that they are not involved? Yeah, Ms. Ms. The judges Mr. cannot Singh. be, the judges have Ms. certain, the, the, Ms. they are immune Ms. from any action. Mr. Singh, in, 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 in February 2010, I'm not just trying to cut you short, but in February 2010 a group of top politicians, military officers were allotted flats worth crores in your city and I want to know from you yes. what, what the police force, I'm what only the politicians, what the entire executive and the bureaucracy did in the other I am, I am saying, when the, when the High Court orders the registration of an FIR, yes. can the High Court also order, I, it, in the same order, that you must seize the property of the gentleman? Yeah. I, I, I Mr. Mr. Subramaniam now, Swami is thinking on the other side. No, no, no. You see, Mr. Swami is thinking. <laughs> now, Mr. Subramaniam Swami is convinced you, you, now you, you said, that, that I came, I was invited by a moderator you and said, who has turned into a panelist you, you and he will have to moderate the rest of the debate. I will, can I correct you? May, may, you, you, you said, may I please you said the that part? judiciary should not should, the other should side only make laws, not yeah. execute Just laws. Before that, I, this I, is precisely what the judiciary is doing today. Opened I, not by the judiciary but by Arnab Goswami. This I, is what I, this I, is precisely what the that. judiciary is doing today. They are not only making laws, Thank they are you. executing laws. Thank you they very much. Police officers. I don't Thank think you. Now, are right, now, Mr. Now, now I, I open up one second. Interventions will come, rebuts will come on the other side, and I already have Mr. Subramaniam Swami on his legs. Was 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 two G 
a justification of judicial activism? Ms. Swami, your three first minutes, all, three to four minutes. First yeah. of all, are you going to give me as much time as you gave Mr. I Sir. will give you... <laughs> Debate. That question as is asked as a politician, not as a lawyer. As long as somebody from your side is willing to cut that. Go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Well, first of all, this uh, topic is uh, uh, framed in uh, with loaded words. The words activism, compromise, these are loaded words. And I don't want to take up time explaining what the definitions uh, of these terms mean. But it's a well-known fact that the Constitution is the supreme document, and all institutions uh, draw their position and power from the Constitution. But the judiciary has been given the responsibility to interpret the Constitution. This responsibility is not with any other, whether it's executive or parliament and so on. They have no right to interpret the Constitution, only the judiciary can. So there's a very direct uh, responsibility placed on the judiciary to intervene where the Constitution is not being followed. Now, I have uh, four questions. First is that if the government fails to act, then what does a, citizens, uh, what does a citizen have by way of relief? I had filed a petition recently where I had written to the government saying that Ram Setu is an ancient monument and it should be recognized as an ancient monument and declared a national heritage monument. The government came to the court and said, we will not say yes, no, or be neutral. <laughs> now, how do, I, what do I, how do I get relief? The only way I can get relief is by the court intervenes and says, as the court did, they said, if you don't take a stand, then we will hear Mr. Swami and give our decision. So here is a case where the government is not doing its duty. It's a, not a question of the judiciary impinging on the government's uh, activity. The government has abdicated, and therefore the judiciary has to see that my constitutional rights are protected. Second question, if there is something arbitrary and illegal, how do I rectify it? In the 2G matter which you mentioned, Mr. Raja issued a press release on 10th of January 2008 at 2.45 uh, p.m. in which he said, which the press release said that those who want licenses should come between 3.30 and 4.30, which is 45 minutes after that, <laughs> with a demand draft of 1651 crore rupees. Now, I can't get a one crore demand draft in 10 days. How can anybody in 45 minutes get 1651 crores? Obviously, that some people had advanced information. They had already got the demand draft, and they were all ready. And some of them were, in fact, sitting in Mr. Raja's room. So they didn't even have to go uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the building to deliver. Now, should not the uh, government intervene? Such a huge loss was caused. And a minister called Mr. Kapil Sibyl says that the loss was zero. <laughs> People said he is not to be blamed because he doesn't know how to count beyond zero. <laughs> now, here in Tamil Nadu, the, show? the chief minister says my birthday is coming. So 1,451 hardened criminals who are serving life sentence for murder, rape, and so on are to be released in celebration of my birthday. <laughs> now, either the chief minister has kinship with these 1,451, <laughs> but he releases it. How do I stop it? I have to go to court and say that my fundamental right has been uh, affected and the courts have intervened and they are now considering the matter. So therefore to say Lakshman Rekha, let me say here too, had Sita not crossed the Lakshman Rekha, Ravan would never have been killed. So sometimes crossing of Lakshman Rekha <laughs> is necessary. <laughs> then there is a question of your rights being denied during the state of emergency which Mrs. Gandhi proclaimed as a constitutional measure, this, uh, the Attorney General went to the court and said, I, we can now take the life of any person without a trial at all. 
which was totally against. But for the judiciary at that time, there would have been no sanity at all brought in in the implementation of the emergency. So we owe the freedom that we have today, the, the luxury of freedom, to the judiciary intervention at that stage. Finally, the judiciary has done a great service to our country by limiting the amending power of parliament. Earlier on, if two-thirds of two-thirds majority you had in parliament, you could amend anything in the constitution. In fact, you could declare anybody as a king or queen. There was some suspicion that Mrs. Gandhi was preparing to be declared as the queen of India. <laughs> and it just before that, in 1973, the Supreme Court said, no, constitution is above everybody else. Parliament is a creature of the constitution. Parliament is not supreme. Anyone who says Parliament is supreme is wrong and that Parliament cannot amend the Constitution beyond its shape. There is a basic structure and that basic structure has to be maintained. So therefore, if this is what you call as judicial activism and if this is what you call as compromise, very good, that's what we want. Uh, Dr. Subramanian Swami, it can also be argued that you have used all the examples which you have used today. I can see that you I, you stood up to respond, I, uh, but uh, <laughs> but that all the examples you have used today are merely aberrations, which you are using today to pass a sweeping generalization on the system. Uh, Give me an example which is not an aberration. Today, aberration is the rule; normality is the exception. In that case, I take that argument. I take that argument and ask Mr. Call. Mr. Call, you have been CAG of India. We talk about 2G, everyone questions the CAG nowadays, except Mr. Swami. <laughs> uh, now, what do you do when there is a case like 2G? And while talking and delivering the 2G judgment, I'd like to quote, the court said very clearly, it is our duty, we are duty bound to strike down policies that violate constitutional principles or were contrary to public interest. Now I know that bureaucrats and politicians have a problem when the courts take over public interest. But who defends public interest? What would happen on the CVC judgment, 2G, Adarsh, black money? Would the bureaucrats be able to do the job? Floor is yours, and then I'd like to open this up to debate to other panelists who want to respond to the specific points made on the other side. Yeah. Quick interventions are coming up. There's going to be an open debate in two minutes. Please, sir, Mr. Call, your Thank comments. I have the advantage of having heard the other participants, so I'll take a more moderate view, because much can be said on both sides. <laughs> the, the point is that yes. we are discussing judicial activism and the compromise uh, uh, of executive powers. I don't think we have passed a stage when we could consider activism a pejorative. So that point I want to make clear. Number two, I have two points, basically. One is a general point and one is a specific point. The general point is, why this selective activism? Judicial activism in full play in the PIL jurisprudence. No play at all in traditional cases. Cases keep on lying for years and they are increasing. In fact, the judiciary is losing public trust, not gaining it, because of the delays in the courts. There is no activism we see on that side. Nothing new, no innovation. The entire sort of courtroom dynamics has been changed by the PIL jurisprudence. But we don't see a similar change on the normal, traditional uh, uh, jurisprudence. Now, why this selective activism? Do the judges enjoy passing with PIL cases and like ignoring their normal work for which they were originally recruited? We would, as people, like to know. I'm speaking as a citizen. Number two point is the specific point. The specific point is this, that we must, you see, unbounded activism or unbounded anything is basically undemocratic. And therefore, we must have some kind of a rational distinction between legitimate activism and illegitimate activism. Unless we have that, we will have kind of a judicial chaos. We can work into it. You must have heard about Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd type of dystopia can emerge in a situation where there's unlimited activism without any definition of the boundaries of activism. Who can yeah. do this? Not the parliament. 
The parliament has proved itself enervated in effect. It is distracted and almost dysfunctional. So forget the parliament. I still have faith in our Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has, been, has an imm immense amount of capacity for self-correction. Now critics may say contradiction, but I would like to say self-correction. The Supreme yes. Court should be used as the forum to which citizens can approach and get a clarity between what is legitimate and what is illegitimate when judges decide cases of actors. That is right. my position. Right. Mr. Call, thank you very much. No. Thank you and a round of applause to, for the opening comments of our panelists today. Just food for thought as I open up to, to responses. To this side I want to say, give me one concrete example and challenge the other side tonight on where under the garb of judgments, the judiciary is forgetting the separation of powers rule under Article 50 of our Constitution. Give me one concrete example. To the other side, I would say tonight, what about the secrecy within the judiciary? Should it be opened up to the RTI? How are judges appointed? Why is there a cloak and dagger manner in which that is happening? Relevant questions. Do we have interventions? Yes. If you have interventions, please raise yes. your can hand. I, and I, I also want to say your intervention should be specific and to the other person. Can I, brief can, and point can I start to... with uh, responses to Mr. Arima Sundaram and no, Mr. Singh? You have, you have in, intervention to him? Yes. Choose one is, person. One he said that who will that decide? Is to who? who will decide? Your point is to Mr. Sundaram? Sundaram. Go ahead. He said there are three C's and he said who will decide? The parliament enacts the law. The executive carried out the mandate of the law and the judiciary decides what the law is. So, it has to be the judiciary. Would you like the executive to decide what the okay. law is? Right. Mr. Sundar. No, and I want to say one more thing. So, not only is the judiciary the, the, the first and the second empire, it is also the third empire. Okay, well, when Mr. The, Mr. Sundar, would you like to respond? <laughs> and you have a counter question as well. Who is that? To? I want to make one thing very clear. I think somewhere along the line, uh, all my friends who are supporting or who are against the motion, appear to have got it completely confused. You talk about fundamental rights being affected, the court's interference, and you call that judicial activism. That's not judicial activism, that's judicial functioning. All the examples which have been given, every single one given by Mr. Swami, by the others, every you, single you example, our cases, I will, I will, I will tell you what is activism in answer to Mr. Goswami's question in a moment. What you have been talking about is judicial functioning. If the judiciary doesn't do that, there is no judiciary. If a fundamental right is affected, it is the duty of the judiciary to act. When we talk about judicial activism in the sense that I understand it to compromise executive powers, I do not mean... Allow me to finish, please. Allow me to finish. I do not mean... It cannot mean judicial activism which corrects misuse of government powers. That is the duty of the judiciary. We are talking about judicial activism compromising executive powers. In other words, example. Where, example. The example. Example. where the judiciary starts laying down policy. For example, take our 2G case there. since Mr. Subramaniam Swami has spoken about I was it. waiting for this yes. moment. Yes. Now, Mr. <laughs> Subramaniam Swami has spoken about the 2G case. He was very correct. The judiciary struck down what was wrongly done. Having struck down what was wrongly done, what is the next step? Is the next step then to say, henceforth, all, all properties shall be given only by auction. Isn't that laying down policy? That now, is a question being asked. That is a question it. being asked at the presidential reference, absolutely. which was passed by the cabinet absolutely. last week. Absolutely. Now you and ask me what review. is judicial One activism. One moment. Review. You ask me what is One judicial second. activism. That One is judicial activism, One more which I am saying One is impinging on executive powers. So you support the 122 licenses being revoked. No. You support no. the fact. You support the fact. I am sorry. He is the advocate for the uh, for Ar the those Ar culprits. I am very so sorry. I do not. You, you, I do you, not support. You support Mr. Swami. The you are an advocate and for Mr. Swami used to interrupt me in the very same way, even in court. <laughs> okay, right. he has a right to rebut. My, <laughs> he has a right to rebut. Since it's 2G, I'd like no, Mr. Swami. Yeah, yeah, let him rebut. And brilliant lawyers are dangerous. That's why. Aren't you? You know, yes. now don't allow dangerous people to take over the executive functions. Are, are, you, are, you, conceding? I, I, are you conceding to him? No, I am not conceding. Let me just say uh, one him, thing. Let him, let I am not response. conceding. As far as the license is concerned, nobody has challenged it. Even the companies have not challenged it. Including your clients, they have not challenged it. <laughs> second, it's a judgment of the second Supreme on court. the question where the court observed that where natural resources are concerned, the best procedure is auction. Was it an observation or was it a direction? It was, that is what is the clarification being sought. 
there is in the constitution and in the provisions of uh, functional judiciary to review yes. such things so here you are saying they have across the limits the court said okay this is an arguable proposition and they issued notice to me to ask for my view in my opinion it is time knowing the number of crooks in the government that have come to occupy it that we should now have a general rule that where it comes to natural resources it should be auctioned and the court was right in uh, uh, therefore but is that the therefore, question is not whether the court was right or wrong i for one may very well feel it was right sir, the question is should the court do it or should parliament yes, do it, it? Is because, that is the question no it is because no it is because it is my fundamental right to see that the proper price is realized by the government the and government which fundamental revenue right by are you to, Mr. Swami? and the court has upheld my has upheld which my fundamental, fundamental right, right which fundamental right are you referring the, to i am referring one minute gentlemen gentlemen i like to say here i'd like to say here that in the case which you are referring to the 2g case the presidential reference which has been asked to it seeks to know the, if the court's order amounts to policy making Yes, right that's the fundamental point as it as asks whether as a broad principle whether as a broad principle it amounts to the formulation of a policy in other words the government is asking the supreme court are you getting into policy formation is the government there trying to corner arnab 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 the only issue here is yeah. as he said it has to be normally auction unless it accepts for circumstances it is not auction for reasons to be specified that is the, the law is already laid down in the balco case no, well, already laid down in the balco case yeah. that it is always free not to auction i think uh, it's already laid uh, down by a three judge bench that it's always uh, free Mr. not Kundra, to auction I think depending one, one, on the exigency one, one, we, are now, we are now we are now getting a second rebut can from, i make a no, 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 second rebut is to tsr subramaniam and who's your point to uh, to uh, call to mr call yes. go ahead now incidentally this is not a rebuttal this is a this is a support of what he said and now that's and the is lobby no no no, 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 no no that's the is no, 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 no. in the no no in the full spirit of brotherly this we both belong to <laughs> don't do this to me <laughs> uh, no uh, no if we today talked of judicial overreach i am glad ariman sundaram has said that this is normal function then we have nothing to say after that any exceptions of course should be condemned any 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 adventures should be condemned in which case but, but then for, but then for, for call the failure of judiciary is precisely the area he has talked about the judiciary has not looked after litigants it has looked after lawyers the 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 no the, no wait 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 the judiciary i don't charge uh, anything no no no, no. <laughs> judiciary takes are you asking a no, question no 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 it takes, make, no, 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 i i may comment for him is that it takes 20 years to decide it takes 20 years to decide justice delayed is justice denied hmm. even though the prosecution investigation or arena in the executive area they have not done overreach disciplined prosecution and disciplined uh, investigation to ensure they give liberal liberal uh, uh, adjournments to favor the lawyers at the expense of the litigants i'm afraid i have offended i, I offended a colleague not offended but, 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 but the fact Arya is no 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 i feel there are areas where more activism is required by the judiciary to perform their own functions i think let the judicial I, person well, answer my, that my, 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 no, i'm answering <laughs> that mr sundaram as a lawyer who appeared in my court will testify that he never got an adjournment so the, i think that, i think justice mudgal would also say i never asked for one yeah because you knew what the answer would be uh, but i want to answer mr sure. emin singh i think you need to inform yourself of what the constitution court is you said section 377 has been struck down Article it could have never have been done yes it can be done the court can strike down an act and please remember this is an act of the 18th century let us not uh, harp on I, it I it reflects it reflects sorry i am not finished it reflects victorian morality you you can't say uh, the court can't strike down court can strike down man must strike down uh, unconstitutional provision but parliament can uh, reenact no no no, no, no reenact sir but, i was referring to article 335 of the constitution no, which no, is not i am talking about you had talked about 377 saying there was no debate the case was heard for 6 months in the delhi high court and, and for 3 months it's being would, heard in the supreme court i would i would i would feel i think this 2g is going to have a walk uh, walk away with this uh, mr sundaram and dr swami <laughs> and this 2g being such a recent thing everybody's interest lies it seems in that but some example that you asked for 
And you see, judicial intervention in, in areas which are non-justiciable are also taking place. Now, example, supposing the judiciary... Again. I they, want an example. You see, like, for example, the, the case of attack on Indian students in Australia, racial attack. Sorry? The Supreme Court issued a notice to the government of India saying, please explain what steps are you taking. What's wrong? Senate, it's a matter what's in what's the diplomatic what's arena. What's right? They are citizens of India. No, Fundamental it? rights they have. Citizens of India in America, in Australia. I mean, so I, what? I, I, they are still yeah. citizens of this India. Is a, this is they are students there. One minute, one. Let him complete then, this point. I'll come to you, sir. No, yeah, yeah. I'm then, when Mayawati is statues and making budgetary provisions, can the judiciary question about the government making budgetary provisions? They will stop it. They are no. there. The, it, the, it the, the, the statues are there with, with the, the statues are there. The court's permission. But, but the Supreme Court issued a notice asking, explain how yeah, you made it. Somebody complained. Yeah, that you I have a counter question. Area. I have a counter now, question for you. Another Mr. question. No, Mr. Like, Mr. for example, Singh, in, you have a lot of hard work. If the, the executive subject. takes a decision to go on war with certain certain country. Can the judiciary no. stop it? No, but my question when to you stopped is... It? My, my question when has the judiciary stopped the war? I'm just well, hypothetical my, my question. I won't do it. If, say, I take the example of, say, the black money case. Right? If the court says... And Mr. Swami is favorite subject. <laughs> Mr. If the court says, black where money. are the sources of the money? What action have you taken? Since you know the money is stashed, hey, it's very much is the money is there is a lot to deal with black money. There is a lot to deal with narcotics, drug, tra drug trafficking, or something else. And Arnab, if the court there is a lot there to be deal with black money, drug money, and money laundering. And therefore, the Supreme Court, High Court, is it all a, courts is have, it a have perfect case. rights is, to intervene. Is in it matter. a classic case of the government's inertia, which has been woken up because I of judicial intervention? I accept that because of many failures of the government, the particularly in the present times, I mean, ridden with scams I mean, and corruption, judiciary oh, no. is getting an upper hand and must in certain I mean, areas. Let's get not an upper confuse hand. the issue. Why? Why when do you say there is a law which issue? is not being followed or yes. being broken? Court should intervene. Correct. Where there are laws which are not being implemented. The courts should intervene. Where there are laws, that is the area of the court's intervention. What we are discussing is not the courts doing what they are meant to do, which is to apply the law, ensure the law is being followed. We are talking about areas which follow, fall within the discretionary Arnab. areas of the executive. Should the courts interfere there? That Arnab. is the question. I thought judicial activism, mm. which you refer to, necessarily you acknowledge that it does not exist in a Vacuum. It is happening because of vacuum. Because being created they are compromising executive, executive powers, which is the power of discretion, which is the power of parliament, which is the power of discretion. Counter if question. It's to do with the law, courts will interfere. Counter question. Today, under IPC or any special acts, there is no law against poverty. There is no law against malnutrition. There is no law against poor public health. You think the courts have nothing to do with this? Of course they, they do. It's Article 21. Yeah. It's Article 21. The courts will yeah. come in. Come in. It's a fundamental right. It's not a law. It's it, is, it is above law. It's fundamental right yes, I is, above, is the strongest law. Fine. Fine. There what, are constitutional what? provisions for those. Fine. I agree. And that is law. I agree. Nothing more serious than constitutional law. One minute. Yes. Yes. Mr. Call. Mr. Call. My point is different. Who's your point to, sir? My, uh, my point is basically to the earlier point I made, which, the, the point that you asked, my point is to you, you said, how do you define adventurism from normal activity? I said there are two things that I can point out, and the Supreme Court can look at the entire thing and come right. to their own thing. First is where judicial orders have fi fiscal implications. Now you are traversing that area and going into Parliament's domain to pass budget. You know the point that Mr. Singh raised about budget allocations for Mayawati. No business of the judiciary. It is the Parliament to decide where it will spend the money. If the money is wasted, certainly, then you can is, prosecute yeah. and go to jail. No, but no one says those beautiful statues cost 600 crores of good artistic money. Unless you can prove that they are not good, not enough, you cannot go so I, I want to, the I, decision of the Parliament to invest money. I, I want to, I want, two. I want to give you an where example to question your point. Okay. You know the endosulfan case, right? Since you said fiscal implications, the Supreme Court banned the production and sale of endosulfan, right? And it said that even the life of one child is more precious than all the financial losses that the industry will occur, yes. and if industry occurs then on tax implications it's perhaps the to the government. My question to you is, is that encroachment? No. 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 Is because Bellari that is Article 21. Is, is that is Article 21. When, when the government suspends mining in the Bellari district yes, saying greed has overshot all limits, Yes. right? Is that 
encroachment no. is that overreach it's no, not it is not okay. but when the judiciary because there again it is article 21 it is a question of protecting the it's environment too important Look, it is law it's it is wrong to clause. say see, that judicial decision my second point yeah, sorry this point then you come well i, so I, I have point I, is I, fiscal implications the second point is judiciary going into areas in which it does not have expertise that is happening expertise. quite a lot ministers do that you and i do that no, no, no. All areas, ministers do that. What's the problem? No, Talk all the experts yourself. and get you a decision. You may be doing that. I've never done that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so policy making it requires a certain degree of knowledge, data, analysis, expertise from various sources, and then policy is made. A judge deciding a complex issue, how natural resources should be priced and disposed of, is too complex an issue to be left to judges. Uh, there are so many. I'll give you the three examples in, in this. There is a trade-off between revenue maximization and environment. Number one, in the disposal of natural resources, there is a trade-off between the premium that you will get from a big auction and the royalty. You can increase the royalty three times, get the money over 25 years. If you get an auction, you will get a lot of money. And we have known, and you have known, Dr. Swami, that whenever there is a windfall with government, it wastes it. Thirdly, end use. If you will price coal at the price of gold, what happens to the price of power? So if you say auction and stop, what happens to disposal of water? Will you auction water also tomorrow? Okay. So therefore, you don't, what happens with this kind of a thing with judges going into areas in which they don't have expertise is that you get simple solutions to complex problems. Okay, I know. No problem. To that, yeah. a rebut from Subramaniam Swami. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, it's no fun to see uh, an army in retreat. Uh, they have half conceded. On that both sides. <laughs> so did Mr. Yeah, joined us. I have not conceded. Uh, they have already conceded that the, uh, uh, the, the judicial activism in where the law is not uh, implemented or that the law is not, is not properly implemented, all these concessions that have been made. That is not activism. That is functioning. That is not activism. You are one second. All right. One Therefore, second. the point is... He's accusing of your misrepresentation. I am, I am so, talking about judicial activism. The only time it compromises executive functions is when it may impinges on what is executive discretion. discretion. Not when it corrects executive mistake, not but, when it directs executive action where the law uh, mandates. It, it is I, well I'd like to, judicial it is, activism it is, it is not... It is, no, is a well, not I'd like to well-established principle when that discretion, executive past, no not, discretion Mr. is Swami unfettered. Mr. Swami is taking the easy way out. No, Mr. there's Swami, no easy way out. you are taking right. a very easy way I'd out. Like, like all you are out. doing is, all you are doing is saying, look, when the executive has broken the law, should the court not interfere? We don't need Dr. Swami to say that. Yes. We could have anybody saying that. Yes. Now, I want to hear Dr. Swami say, yes. should the courts interfere when it's a pure discretionary matter for parliament? Yes, to I will tell you the court should. Under which no. provision? Yes. 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 No. I will let tell you that. Let him okay. answer. Okay, can, can I answer? You, yes, you will both. Okay, you, he's I, conceding I, to I, you I, under I, which provision? Former Chief Justice. Easy. One, Ariman, I would like to say this, that if... The action is totally arbitrary. Right. Yes, the court can and should intervene. I have no right. quarrel with that. Right. Secondly, are, uh, again I, I would like to Let answer one question which uh, Arnam asked, which I think left, uh, got left out. What is the secrecy around appointment of judges? I think he is justified in raising this issue. Thank you. And it should be more open and transparent, having gone through the process both, uh, both by being selected and selecting judges. I'd like to say it should be more transparent. But secondly, we, I, always the question comes, why does it take 20 years in India? Do you know the judge population ratio in India is much less than many African countries also? And even then, there are certain high courts who dispose of more cases than that are filed. So if suppose, supposing 1,000 cases are filed in a high court, maybe 1,200 cases are disposed of, but past areas no, cannot do just anything. Just a little bit, but do you know the vacancy ratio? That's do you know the number of vacancies that exist in the courts today? That's a very stale Why? argument. We can say that, that about that's all not organizations, the, including police, the police, also, we can including do police also. Uh, Arnab, so but the can point a mandamus be here, issued the point to fill the vacancies? Was can a mandamus be issued by the court to fill the vacancies in the judiciary? It, it, should. Would, not. it should not. It would not. It should not. Certainly not, because that is within a certain a certain manner of acting. Arnab. The judiciary appoints in the manner that, it's that it has, appointments take place. But if tomorrow, could any court turn around and direct the court, appoint judges? No, but they can ask why you have not. So. They can ask why you have not done so. No. 
the unfettered discretionary power is not permitted That's in the, our constitution. Now we are coming to the core issue. That, we, therefore, even in discretion areas, it is, has to be a reasonable exercise of discretion. You can't tomorrow decide that I'll have this project going through the middle of the town. There's a, a you can't yeah, say that policy. Again, obvi obvi yeah, yeah, I give you an example where the uh, Setu Samudram project was decided, uh, and they, uh, court, they came to court to argue that this is policy. We showed that there were alternative ways of doing it much better, and the court had intervened, and that's how the whole thing has been stopped. And so, I, therefore, then what is the purpose of a parliament? What is the purpose of good, people good going to vote? Good question. If Parliament, if, if what you are saying is there is no doubt that we have very, very learned people sitting as judges, there is no doubt that we have very erudite, very people of the greatest integrity who are the judges. But the point is, the whole concept of Parliament is that people vote a representative. These are people who are answerable to the people. You may not be happy with the choice of the, of, of the members elected, that is not but when people you, have reposed their faith to... in them to take that decision, should that decision so, be taken so by somebody a, else this who, is, who has not been voted? Mr. Mr. Who has not been voted? Mr. Sundaram, yeah. this is something that was decided during the Constituent Assembly debates of the, exactly. in 1948 and 49. The founding fathers of our Constitution framed this. They gave a certain degree of primacy to the judiciary over of the course. two organs of the state. Of course, they and did. Yes, you say I'm taking a position since of you said Article 142 gives a unique and extraordinary. 141 and 142 yeah. 41, gives a unique and extraordinary part right. of the Supreme Court to do. If I'm not mistaken, the yes. Honourable Justice can, can, uh, can correct me, oh, to do complete justice. Yes. The court was to do complete justice in any manner, matter no. that is before. And I'd like Let to clarify. I'd like no, am I, no, my am turn. I quoting no, you are you're quoting Sundram, it wrong. You are quoting Sundram, it wrong. It's my turn. Do, one moment. Mr. Sundram, to do my complete turn. Don't justice. Don't interrupt. Just Don't let me interrupt. finish this. <laughs> to do complete justice in any cause between the parties. That's what happens. It happened. does not mean that you just take up any cause and say, I want to do yeah. complete justice, I want a metro put down the entire... What a pity, right I couldn't shut him up the way yeah. I oh, could oh, in oh, court. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Now, <laughs> I, I want to say something, I want to give you an example of the way the judicial activism, even lawmaking has helped the citizens of India. You know Vishakha judgment, it filled in the legislative gaps till the legislature steps in. Today, uh, sexual harassment of women in workplace can be looked into in public bodies. Now, there was no law, the parliament was not interested in enacting law. The rights of women to live fairly and with dignity were being violated. The Supreme Court has laid down guidelines which does amount to judicial lawmaking, but it is beneficial judicial lawmaking. It is there till the legislature steps in, and the legislature, unfortunately, from 97 has is not yet to in. step in. Is yet to step in. Yeah. I agree with you. The but my point is, do we not have a huge area of grey? Which is why I said lack of consistency. When I started, I said there is a lack of consistency because we have a huge grey area. Yeah, this is beneficial you. judicial legislation. I'm not, I this is not beneficial judicial I'm not, I don't legislation. See any grey area How at do all? we have judicial because legislation from, in the but, first place? But, but please, from what we have heard till now, so long as they function within Article 19, 21, 30 odd, etc., etc., and 142, it's conceded except in one case under reference. Yeah. We've not heard any other case in 60 years. They have gone beyond that. Yeah. What is the dispute about that? No, 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 the question uh, arises. Justice Mutkal just I, gave I one any, more any, any, any any of a beneficial judicial legislation. Justice Mutkal just gave another example. We are debating this today because of what the court has done in so many cases. But it's broad based. It. Has the increasing assertiveness slash activity slash activism of the court made the political and bureaucratic class very insecure. It made it extremely <laughs> insecure. That it has made it realize its own flaws in case after case. Does this side have an equal answer to that very basic question? Let's not get lost in articles and you know, uh, interpretations of cases. And, not and it is Tell me today, do you believe or not as a former CAG, as a former police commissioner <laughs> and as a lawyer... You can deal with all these problems of corruption under the normal law. You don't, a judge doesn't have to come and be an no. activist. Oh, yeah. See, Absolutely. and all these, all these problems are being dealt with under the regular laws only. Sir, are you saying there's nothing historic about 2G? 
There's nothing historic about the CBC judgment. You there is nothing said, historic about the black money case. There is nothing Adar, historic about Cargill for profit. I, I Adar, said initially itself that because this government or the, the, this political class is ridden with these scams and corruption charges and all that, you have given a free hand to the judiciary to step in and take that position. Under the and law. therefore, you Under feel the, the common law. masses. Under the, the common masses feel well Under the welcome. At not, least there is a judiciary in which we can put our hope. Fine. Not but, adventurism. Under the constitution. Or no, no, one has answered. Oh, no, no. We, no one has answered my question. What about the larger public interest of those cases which are pending for 20 uh, years? Yes. Where is judicial activism I, then? I, 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 I have answered I, the question. I, 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 will, I, I have already answered the question you by saying. already answered, I will answer. We need more so, judges. Subramaniam Swami is responding to you. Mm. Since uh, Mr. Sundaram quoted the American Supreme Court, let me tell you that American Supreme Court in the whole year takes only 200 cases and rejects all the others. They don't have benches. They, all the entire Supreme Court sits. Three it gives only. 20 minutes to one side, 20 minutes to another side, and 10 minutes to reply. And then they go back into the chambers, decide, and come back and make the announcement. Here, the lawyers speak because they are paid by the hour, so they speak <laughs> for 10 days. I think the longest it's arguments the in the 2G case were by Mr. But, Swami. You know, <laughs> But judges are not paid per hour for listening. <laughs> Arnab, I have to add one, I have one point. This is hitting below I, think the call, I think Call is correct in highlighting that in this we shouldn't get away with the feeling in this debate that the judiciary is perfect, they are doing extremely well. No, no, there are clear areas the judiciary needs to intervene in the interest of the public, change procedures, bring technology, new, bring new systems, discipline lawyers, Help the litigants. Litigants should know if he's happy to come to court rather than he's not running away. I, uh, there is so much of perjury taking place. Yes. Every arbitration proceeding takes more than a regular case. There are huge I, areas of at, amendment to be at done. At the I end of this debate, at the, towards the end of this debate, I'm now, I'm now asking both sides. I'm taking a one minute. I'm going to, by one minute, we'll just be quiet. In one minute, I want both sides to decide one example which they think. One case, one instance, one example, which they think will demolish the other side's argument. I give you one minute to discuss it among yourselves. When we come back, I'm going to get that one argument from both sides. You can discuss which one of you is going to represent it. Why don't no, you talk among yourselves? Yeah. The, the onus argument. is on them. They must produce an example. You then think you will contradict. <laughs> so, so which, are you, you see, deciding? The problem one, one, with one, answering, I, Dr. Swami, is he wears two hats. At times he's a lawyer, at times he's a politician. I don't know which one to answer. But, well, le let me tell you, let me, may I take one minute to tell you that there was a dispute between heaven and hell once because the hell was playing football and they broke the wall dividing the two. And the heaven people wanted to have the hell people build the wall. So they went to Brahma's court for dispute. The uh, hell people brought the best lawyers. The heaven people couldn't find a single lawyer. Now, now, is this side prepared with one argument? Yeah. While you listen to can this I, argument, while you listen, while you listen, while you listen to this argument, one person puts the point of view. Please be all ears. Yes. The other side. I'm, now, now, I'm what, going to go. To be, I'm going to go away what, from. They have, they have to be ready with. I'm going to go away from two G. You have to have their attention. And first. take a, one minute. You haven't got their attention yet. Yeah. You got their, Have you decided among yourselves? Yes. Two points of view, ladies and gentlemen. We present it. One. Both I, sides. I would like to give debate. an example of under trial prisoners. In Bihar, they were under trial prisoners who had undergone their entire sentence and the case had not come up. It is because of the intervention of the Supreme Court that the lists were prepared and those prisoners were let off on their personal bonds. I would say this affected the entire judiciary, entire under trials. It's still not been remedied completely. But I would say this is an example. People who are forgotten in jails, who are poor, who are helpless, who have received benefit of a PIL. One point Sir, was allowed. One, may, one example may. from me. Oh. RTI, RTI was resisted by the government till the Supreme Court directed the government to enact an RTI Act as being fundamental right of the citizens. Right. And that has been a great boon to our country. Okay. Now, thank you. A round of applause for this side, please. Loud round of applause for this side. We've had a beautiful debate, fantastic debate. Now let's, let's, get, let's hear from you, because there were two points made on this side. I allow you to make two strong points, which you think I'll, will demolish Dr. Uh, Swami and his team. I will make only one point, that the judiciary itself has not addressed the ills that prevail in the judicial administration system. 
Now, you talked about one single case in Bihar where a judicial intervention saved a prisoner who was languishing in the jail for a long time. Not a prisoner. Thousands of prisoners. Sir, uh, you come with me. I was Inspector General of the Prisons of the Maharashtra State. You come to any central prison in any part of the country, and I will show you hundreds of such prisoners are still languishing. This is one symbolic case has not addressed the issue. No, but then... then you are I think condemning is, yourself. I think one, one, one. Th then you mention one, about one, you, one, one, you one mention point, about large point. number of cases pending in the in the courts, etc. I don't think the judiciary itself has tried to solve this problem. One more point. Merely by complaining that you are short of judges is not going to okay, help. Fine. Judiciary must come out with the proper that, reforms pr proposals so that these may, uh, issues may, are addressed. What about one the police? More thing, may, one may more thing about say. police. One I, more thing. Let one, me. One, I, I gave you one one no. point. Now you you can't do that. He is a policeman. He is a law unto himself. <laughs> Sir, when one more, one more point. One, one, one point. You had one, one point. When it is a professor, an advocate, a politician, and an activist, it's a deadly combination. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one more point. Adiman Sundra wants to make one last point. Yes. Let's yes. Yes. Arnav, I do not think any example is more crystal clear as to where judiciary has to draw a line than in a case where they say something has been illegally done and we are striking down what has been done and they should stop there and say redo it as per law but when the judiciary then turns around and says from now on the government and parliament shall deal in such and such a manner with a natural resource and only sell it in such a manner and none other it is a clear case of impinging on executive and legislative powers. And I feel if that line is not crossed, if the judiciary sits as the watchdog, which it is, it is the watch for to see against government wrong action, inaction, yes. But it cannot replace the government. It cannot preach, and then it should be on the pulpit. It cannot equally legislate for in that case, they should stand for elections. And see you in court. Well, well, I see you in court, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I'd only say at the very end, as long as the judiciary defends liberty, everyone's liberty, its own, the citizens, as well as hopefully also that of the media, I think we will be looking forward to a good tomorrow. A big round of applause to our panelists today for this wonderful debate. And thank you very much for coming all the way.